Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm Will. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons, and today we're talking about monks, the way of the ascendant dragon monk. Hey, Brian. Hey, Will. How you doing today? I'm feeling strong as fuck. <laughs> Are you now? Yeah. That's good. I, we're about to talk about a strong as fuck monk. I feel like I've been living in a temple and doing push-ups yeah, with my entire like, body. Do you feel like you have uh, the might of a dragon in your spirit and your soul? It's definitely, it's a might of, a dra- it's the might of a dragon, uh-huh. and it's in my thighs mostly because <laughs> so, of all the squats, <laughs> dragon squats. Well, this leads into my first question of the episode. Have you ever wanted to throw a punch packed with the power of a dragon? I already did it, but yeah. yes. <laughs> Well, now you can with the Way of the Ascendant Dragon. That's awesome. Uh, in some ways, this can be viewed as the physical counterpart to the Trigonic Bloodline Sorcerer. In my, oh, this is wow. my opinion. Okay. Instead of your Draconic Heritage affinities expressing themselves as pure magic, this character option gives you the physical prowess and abilities of dragon kind. That's cool. Dragons be strong. Dragons do be strong. And buff. Yeah. Like, we, we focus so much on, like, the, the, the magic part, but no, they're, they're physically, they lift. Yeah, we just they covered. They definitely lift. We just covered the new gem dragons last episode. Yeah. So if you haven't watched that, go check it out. But we've, we've been talking about dragons, and they be lifting. They do, they do be lifting. <laughs> True. So the dragon god Bahamut is known to travel the material plane in the guise of a young monk at times. And legend says that he founded the first monastery of the Way of the Ascendant Dragon in this guise. Uh, the fundamental teaching of this tradition holds that by emulating dragons, a monk becomes a more integrated part of the world and its magic. By altering their spirit to resonate with draconic might, monks who follow this tradition augment their prowess in battle, bolster their allies, and can even soar through the air on draconic wings. But all this power is in service of a greater goal, achieving a spiritual unity with the essence of the material plane. Wow. So Bahamut walked around and said, no, lift harder. Yeah. Lift heavier. Like, do you see these dragons lifting? You too can lift like them. Check this out. It's a (laughs) medicine ball, my guy. Well, um, (laughs) this kind of ties into what you were saying last episode. I guess you you were watching some videos and they were talking about how they uh, were really tying dragons into the material plane. Yes. I mean, that's essentially what this just said is like you're achieving a spiritual unity with the essence of the material plane. Right. I find that interesting. Uh, I wonder why they're tying dragons specifically to the material plane. Well, they're powered by the material, like their hordes. The bigger the horde, the more powerful the dragon. Right. right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So they're they're literally like creatures of like the material, you know, creatures that are tied to certain planes like demons sure. and the abyss and stuff they get their power you know like i was kind of comparing it to hella from ragnar thor ragnarok oh, and like being tied yeah. to asgard you yeah, can't yeah, kill yeah. me because i am asgard he's like well that guy's gonna blow up asgard right sorry yes. spoilers for thor ragnarok, <laughs> thor ragnarok but yeah. they blow the fuck up out of asgard, asgard. i won't true. tell you how no absolutely okay that's a, i like that that's a good analogy and i didn't see it that way and uh, i like it yeah um so as a follower of the way of the ascendant dragon you decide how you unlock your the powers of dragons within yourself. So they, they do give you a chart, but I mean, I always find it funny. Sorry, this is a little sidebar. I always find it funny that they do feel the need to in- include this, this line here. Yeah. They're like, oh, it's your character. Decide how you want to do it. It's like, isn't that how everyone builds their characters though? But I think, th- I don't think they don't, they do this for no reason. I think that this allows some people to think outside of the box. Well, if you go on Twitter, uh-huh. you would realize that everyone constantly forgetting that rule. That's so crazy to me. Yeah, so I, I think they continue to, to be like, but uh, yes, we wrote this thing because you, you, you want and need it or whatever, but like also be free, my child. Exactly. Welcome to tabletop games. Right, exactly. Where you do what you want because it's the brain and there is nothing on the table except for your, basically you projecting your brain onto it. Exactly, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, that's just a small sidebar. Yeah. But, let's but these are it. cool gra- guidelines and stuff. I, I, I like I like abs- the written stuff. Absolutely. Um, so let's get into the features you get when you take uh, this um, subclass as a monk at third level. So the first feature you get is called Draconic Discipline, which of course you get at third level. Um, you can channel Draconic Power to magnify your presence and imbue your unarmed strikes with the essence of a dragon's breath. Nice. You gain the following benefits. Draconic Presence. If you fail a Charisma, Intimidation, or Charisma Persuasion check, you can use your reaction to re-roll the check as you tap into the mighty presence of dragons. Once this feature turns a failure into a success, you can't use it again until you finish a That's cool. Rest. You can keep bombing on it until, until you do you a good right. one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's fun. I like that. Yeah. I kind of wish spells worked like that. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, Draconic Strike. 
When you damage a target with an unarmed strike, you can change the damage type to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison. It's fucking cool. That is cool. Behold my lightning fists. I made an item that like that's like that. Did you? I homebrewed it for our Super Quest Saga game. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I changed you my did. damage you type really on did. stuff. You really did. Yes, you yeah. do. Yes, you well, do. That's fucking cool. They mm -hmm. read. They read the minds of people that probably have the same exact yeah. thoughts as me. It's fun. <laughs> uh, Tongue of dragons. You learn to speak, read, and write draconic or one other language of your choice. It's kind of weird if it wasn't draconic, but maybe you already know draconic. Yeah, so that, I, that's true. You, you, you learned another language. The freedom there is nice. Indeed. You get another feature at level three called Breath of the Dragon. You can channel destructive waves of energy like those created by the dragons you emulate. When you take an attack action on your turn, you can replace one of the attacks with an exhalation of draconic energy and either a 20-foot cone or a 30-foot line that is 5 feet wide. Your choice, choose a damage type, acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison. Each creature in that area must make a deck save against your key save DC. Taking damage from the chosen type equal to two rolls of your martial arts die on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. Is this still like a mm -hmm. wisdom thing for monks, or what's your? Yes, it is a wisdom. Oh, okay, thing okay. For monks. Yeah. So with monks, dexterity for obviously for being quick and for their unarmored defense, and yeah. then wisdom for their unarmored defense and all of their chakra stuff. Yeah, all their key, yeah. like uh, like the radiant one can like shoot beams. They use that. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot like a spell mod. Basically, at 11th level, the damage of this feature increases to three rolls of your martial arts die. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. When you have no uses available, you can spend two key points to use this feature again. At level 6, you get your next feature. It's called Wings Unfurled. Mm. When you use your Step of the Wind, you can unfurl spectral draconic wings from your back that vanish at the end of your turn. While the wings exist, you have a flying speed equal to your walking speed. That's great. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency mod, um, or proficiency bonus, excuse me, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. At level 11, you gain the feature Aspect of the Worm. The power of your draconic spirit now radiates from you, warding your allies and inspiring fear in your enemies. As a bonus action, you can create an aura of draconic power that radiates 10 feet from you for one minute. For the duration, you gain one of the following effects of your choice. First, Frightful Presence. Nice! That's so cool! Yeah, straight up from the dragon. When you create this aura, and as a bonus action on subsequent turns, you can choose a creature within the aura. The target must succeed on a Wisdom saving throw against your key save DC, or become frightened of you for one minute. Target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, and ending the effect on itself on a successful one. You can imagine just getting really buff for that one. <laughs> yeah, like, absolutely. Like taking sure. off your shirt and flexing. <laughs> like, yeah. Absolutely. I bet you're afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I would be. Um, <laughs> resistance is another, is what you can choose instead of uh, Frightful Presence. Choose a damage type when you activate this aura, acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison. You and your allies within the aura have resistance to that damage. That's great for fighting dragons. Yeah, that is that is great for fighting dragons. <laughs> Once you create this aura, you can't create it again until you finish a long rest, unless you expend three key points to create it again. I'm sorry, I'm still thinking about Frightful Presence. Like, yeah. the flavor that you can do with that is unending. Yeah, Frightful like, Presence is pretty, pretty fun. What if I just, like... Dropped trow no, and started no, going no, for it on the floor. That would scare. No. That would scare people. Yeah, but that, yeah, yeah. I, I'd, I'd have to run. I would disengage. <laughs> <laughs> At right, level seventeen, you get your final feature called Ascendant Aspect. Your draconic spirit reaches its peak. You gain the following benefits: augment breath. When you use your breath of the dragon, you can spend one key point to augment its shape and power. The exhalation of draconic energy becomes either a 60-foot cone or 90-foot line that is 5 feet wide, your choice. And each creature in that area takes damage equal to 4 rolls of your martial arts die on a failed save, half as much on a successful one. That's neat, okay. You gain blind sight. You gain blind sight out to 10 feet. Within that range, you can effectively see anything that isn't behind total cover, even if you're blinded or in darkness. Moreover, you can see an invisible creature within that range unless the creature successfully hides from you. I think that's the really key like use of this feature because I'm seeing it. We're seeing it more and more, right? This, what? Like since it came out, the what? blind sense, and that's yeah, like blind yeah. sight. Uh, but I haven't like used it practically, like the practical application of it in game. Hasn't, hasn't come like, up yet. Not for me. Right. But um, let me know what you think of Blindsight, like, in the comments and stuff. I want to know who's, like, running it and what they're doing. That'd be cool if you guys could. <clears throat> um, next, you also get Explosive Fury. When oh, you dang. activate your aspect of the worm, Draconic Fury explodes from you. Choosing any number of creatures you can, choose, you can see in your aura, each of those creatures must succeed on a dex saving throw. 
against your key save DC or take 3d10 acid cold fire lightning or poison damage your choice I thought about the trowel thing again <laughs> no Brian no god damn it I can't control it that's the last feature you get that's the last feature you get I ruined it there are more but I can't we don't get to hear them anymore because I said the poop we, thing we both built <laughs> just uh, kidding ascendant dragon monks which mm-hmm. we will tell you all about after the short rest we gotta rest first before we talk about it hello everybody this is Tom Case and this is Will Stark Will Could you imagine if we had our own podcast? Dude, could you imagine? What if the Loch Ness Monster was real? Do you think they would open, like, essentially a quote-unquote Jurassic Park for this? Oh, no, no. no. They're not going to let anyone look at it. What if your house was haunted? Mm -hmm. Let's say it was a woman. She wants companionship. No. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm not not talking about, like, love or sex or anything. Okay, cool. You know, I I was going to bring this up, but I knew you were going to say no, so. What if someone close to you was a werewolf? Set up a camera. It would still be a full moon, so she would turn into a wolf monster. Go out in the night, probably kill some people. Oops. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, nothing I can do about that. The best in what if entertainment. Just search Dude, Could You Imagine, anywhere podcasts can be found. We've returned. Indeed we have. We are back, and I built a character. Indeed he did. He didn't have a name, but now his name is Kieran. I like it. It's a good name. Her name. Her name. Her name is Kieran. I want to do... Kieran is a draconic kind of uh, monster, which... Yes. I like that. Uh, And this character is based off of uh, Krillin, or like they say, like, Kuririn in... Mm. uh, In uh, Dragon Ball? In Dragon Ball. In Dragon Ball. Um, So mainly just in, like... I don't know. Krillin's backstory is kind of or like backstory? both. I, I built a halfling. So, is there a short bald halfling? A short bald with, with halfling the six dots? girl, girl um, with a dragon tattoo. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All the references. All the references. I've never read those or watched it or um, whatever it is. It's an excellent movie. I know. It's, it's like a, a holy shit good movie. I hear a lot of good yeah. things. Um, Speaking I, of which, I sorry, I'm, I, this is a big interrupt, but I've been meaning to ask. Have you seen Dune? Oh, the movie Dune? Yeah, the new movie Not Dune. Not the new one, but the old no, one. No, the new one. Yeah, I've heard it's very good. It's it has so fucking good. It has Zendaya in it. So. Barely, but like she's barely in Whatever. it. Whatever. She's cool. She just got to touch the thing. It's Dude, gold. everything. Spider-Man? Every, uh, Spider-Man? Zendaya. Oh, yeah, she's in Spider-Man. Uh, as a fan of the book Dune, sorry for this sidebar. Um, it was it was it was a very much a Fellowship of the Ring moment. I was like, oh, they did it! Like they brought it to life. Oh like, yeah, they because succeeded. the old one, the technology was like not no, there to make no. that movie. And it's it's a difficult book to adapt, anyways. But sorry, back is to Vin, back is to the old one Vin Diesel? No, it went way before him. Back in 1984. What am I thinking of with Vin Diesel? Man? I have no idea. Me neither. Let's, let's keep, talk let's about keep your moving monk. on. Sorry, yeah. guys, that's my bad. I'm obsessed with the new new movie Dune, though. Absolutely obsessed. So, Kieran, the the um, the ascendant dragon monk, is a a bald halfling girl. That we dragged. I said all that shit. Yes. Um, but I've got plus one strength, plus three dex, plus two con, plus zero intelligence, plus two wisdom, and minus one charisma. Because when Krillin comes onto the anime, he's a little snob. Right, I think I remember that. That tracks. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a 15 AC, and I got um, some good some decks and strength saving throws and proficiency. I took acrobatics, athletics. Um, that's all I have marked here, but I imagine there's more stuff that I should have selected. Um, mm. But I imagine, like, um, uh, you know, the keep the charisma low. Um, maybe take, like, religion for whatever's going on here at this monastery that I'm joining, which is, like, super dragon related. So basically, I show up here as a child. I'm dropped off, and I, I can return home when I'm a good monk, a good dragon monk. Right. Hey, come back home when you can fly, or whatever it is that they do here. That's level six, yeah. And I'm going to be squatting, mm-hmm. and doing push-ups, and punching and kicking, and eating protein. Nice. And lettuce. Getting so strong. I mean, like, do you think do you think a dragon temple monastery would be about the protein, or do you think they would be more of, like, the, the vegan? Do you think how much embodiment of, like, dragon culture would this I monastery, think, like, kind of carry? <laughs> I mean, we could we could lean into the Bahamut, like, do you lift like dragons lift? But um, I think I, I think we should. Well, well, what think, does that mean, you know? Like, are we picking up? Uh, here's a big rock. You know? <laughs> I mean, it could be, but I'm thinking it's more along the, the lines of, like, attune your spirit to the material plane to the spirit of dragons you know that yeah. probably uh, permeate this area you know what i mean i think my sensei is going to be like kind of coy and like sort of a douche like with the mystery like mm-hmm. like early yoda in empire strikes back he's like 
don't know. Can you lift that rock? Dragons can lift that rock. Exactly. And I can lift that rock because I like I'm like dragon. Yeah. <laughs> Me buff. Yeah. There you go. Sure. Uh, so uh, you can lift that rock. You can. We'll we'll call you monk. Okay, little boy. So little girl. I, do you have feats, by the way? I think yeah. You have some feats. I got some feats here. What feats you got? Um. Let's see. Pulling them up right now. Uh. Let's see. We got martial arts is what I get as like a monk. Where's the Where's the like extra feats I get? There should be a feat. Oh, there it is. It's freaking D&D Beyond. I got the mobile feat, which I really love. Um, anytime I'm playing like a combative physical fighter class, I really like this feat. Um, I can uh, My speed increases by 10 feet. Uh, when I use the dash, ac dash action, difficult terrain doesn't cost me extra movement on that turn. And when you make a melee attack, a creature... Uh, I don't provoke opportunity attacks from a creature until uh, the rest of the turn. Uh, whether I'm hit or not. Yeah. So the next one I got is Crusher. Uh, once per turn, when you hit a creature with an attack that deals bludgeoning damage, you can move it five feet to an unoccupied space, provided the target is uh, no more than one size larger than you. So I think I'm as a halfling, I'm small, um, so I can move medium creatures around. Yeah, yeah. it would be. Yeah, it would be medium creatures. I could still move. That's most people. Yeah, it is most people. Not centaurs. With your fingers. not the animal stat block. Not, not the creature the, stat block. Not the block. monster stat block, but the actual racial stat block. Yes. Welcome to D&D. So dumb. <laughs> but okay. Uh, also, when you score a critical hit that deals bludgeoning damage to a creature, attack rolls against that creature are made with advantage until the start of your next turn. Right. So that's real really good cool. At punching. I picture this like like I'm small, so I'm like really focusing my energy into specific strikes, and I'm going for the ribs, and yeah. I'm going for the neck and the throat and stuff. Absolutely. Like, I'm really gonna decimate you, uh, decimate you right there. Um, but that's it. It's all it's all unarmed attacks. It's using my size and like. Um, I can move through a creature's space, so I'm going to be using my mobile feet to be doing like a lot of that stuff and weaving in and out of battle and doing good punches. And when the time comes and I do my good squats, I can fly. Absolutely. Yeah, that's going right. to be awesome. You ready to talk about my character? Yeah. Okay, so my character, I built a uh, Gem Dragonborn, which is a new... Well, that, they'll be getting their own episode, or Dragonborns will be getting a second episode, I should say, because we have new Chromatic, Metallic, and Gem Dragonborn. Do they officially have tails yet? I have no idea. People get so oh, mad yeah. at us for saying, like, you you could we, give them tails. Yeah, you not that they do. Them, we never said that they did have yeah. tails. We said you, you could you give could them tails give them because tails. the the one because of them. tails are cool and there's nothing wrong with having them. And yeah, especially if you're a dragon inspired creature. Indeed. But like, also remember, you can do whatever you want. So D and D. My uh, ascendant dragon monk is actually retired. His name is Uncle Olakai, and he's an old gem dragon born. He's probably like. Mid seventies, okay. You know, um, and the truth of the matter is, he he left his old monastery because his his ways were outdated, if you will. Like not to him, but to the monastery, which is starting to focus more on like aggression and oh, okay. getting a little bit more militant. And he he tried to teach and be like, no, like. Um, this is a spiritual journey. It's not about conquering and hoarding. And, like, the monastery is starting to go more towards, like, the way chromatics are dragons. We need to go beat up that other yeah. mo that rival monastery. Yeah, well, Uncle Olakai is like, no, like, we are a gem dragon tribe. Like, we should stay true to ourselves. No, so, don't don't buy the Nordic track. Yeah. So don't <laughs> you, we don't use the Bowflex. What about the barbells? <laughs> well, the kettlebell. He wasn't, really, he wasn't really banished per se, but he was essentially banished in that, like, People started to just see him as like, like old and uh, like old thinking and silly and like he he's not taking the world he's not changing with the world right. and basically all his wisdom is being wasted. So you know he's like you know what I'm old I'm gonna travel the world I don't belong here so let me let me find my way. People kept saying to him they're like. You know, man, you could just like walk down the mountain. They'll probably listen to you down there. <laughs> right. Oh, I don't know. So now he spends his days uh, going from a b body of water to body of water because he's a uh, excellent and hobbyist fisher. He likes okay. to fish. Cool. I had to choose uh, an artisan tool, so I chose fishing. Okay. <laughs> and so I worked that into his backstory. But don't uh, don't let his old age and his like jovial personality. Um, uh, deceive you because this dude's a tough motherfucker. He's strong. Yeah, he's yeah. so strong. I forgot I took the hand drum. You so, reminded me. Oh yeah, you got the hand drum. Yeah. Doom, 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 doom. So real quick from his, I want, I want his racial traits. So as a gem dragonborn, um, he gets a force breath weapon, and he also he also resists force damage, 
Um, he gets a sonic mind. He can telepathic, send telepathic messages to creatures that they can see within 30 feet of him. Mm. Um, and he gets gem flight. He can use a bonus action to manifest spectral rings for one minute. Okay, cool. Wings um, again. Wings again. So there's a little bit of redund- redundancy here, but I just like the flavor, so I didn't care. Oh, yeah, that's good. Um, for his feats, uh, he took one feat. It's a dragonborn feat called Draconic Hide. He got to increase his, uh, I think, oh, I forgot to choose here. Um, I think I'm going to go with Constitution okay. by one. by one. So his con should actually be 15 instead of 14. That was between con strength and, and charisma, charisma, right? Yeah. Okay. While he's not wearing armor, which he doesn't because he's a monk, mm-hmm. he can calculate his AC as base 13 plus dexterity mod. Cool. Um, so his dex should be, let me see here, uh, 3 plus 3. So honestly, it should be, is that right? It should be 19. I'm not sure why it's calculating a 16 here. Maybe you didn't finish like picking like yeah. what the feat was doing. Um, but either way, so yeah, he should have 19 AC. Um, That's for, good. For skills, I chose acrobatics, athletics, insight, and perception. Um, again, I just want to lean into the wisdom here. Like he's he has so much experience mm-hmm. in his life. Like he, he has insight into the way people act around him because he's seen it before. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's very perceptive. He's very hard to fool. Um, and basically, he's just ready to get swept up in an adventure at some point. It shows the far traveler background because, again, he comes from like a far off land. He's a sonic, like gem born dragon. Yeah, like, so when we find him, he's left the monastery. Yeah, he's like out exactly. and about in the but, lands. But as a far traveler, you know, it's very obvious that he's some sort of exotic uh, being. So, you know, he, he, he gets curious glances everywhere he goes. Um, was there anything else interesting I took with him? I like that because you can you can pick up with an adventuring party. I, I left a lot of uh, like open space with my character, while whereas your character has like the rich story background that could add to like the lore of the party itself. Right, exactly. And um, but generally, he's just a kind a kind old soul. I'm going with a very Uncle Iroh. You know, Uncle Iroh is a fucking badass. Yeah. But like, he never fights because he's just the nicest guy who always sees like the better path. He's always full of like uh, idioms and wisdom and parables and stuff. Yeah, that's how I picture I think Olakai. Part of it, the Uncle Iro thing is like he lives a more peaceful life because he was like a warlord. Right. Feels yeah. Guilty exactly. About he feels it. guilty. Well, this is more along the lines of like his people became more like the the Fire Nation came and they yeah. left him behind. Okay. And so he saw he saw that he had no place there anymore. So he ventured off into the world. Maybe you have to go back and like deal with the yeah. bullshit. Like they're like the it all changed when the, gem, when the gem nation invaded. <laughs> oh my god! That's me trying to rephrase it. So, anyways, um, that's Uncle Olakai. <laughs> nice. That's um, really cool. Yeah, I like him. Hopefully, you guys like him too. We didn't do any magic items. Um, no, because they're monks, man. I they're the, all austere and shit. I have the three star ball. Yeah, sure. You got the three star ball. Does, what does Uncle Iroh have? So he can play like a card game. Uh, like a really cool teapot. Yes, yes. He's he's got a teapot. Yeah, he's like a really, a really nice. He loves one. tea and he loves to fish. He stole it from the witch light. He likes to drink tea while he fishes. He's got a fey wit. He's got a fey witch. Uh, fey teapot. Let's take a long rest. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome to the long rest. It's time to talk about building a beholder. On this part of the episode, we usually shoot the shit. And in the year of the beholder, we are talking about building our own custom beholders, which mm-hmm. we have done every episode this year. Go to the long rest, check them out, and uh, then the hobble man came and started drawing them. It's like very my, well, yeah. In fact, it's my all fa- very horrifying looking. It's my favorite. Uh, my favorite old poem is "Then the hobble man came." <laughs> favorite children's book um, tale. What was I gonna say? Uh, th- this is the eighth feature we do. So we do. Assuming we are correct, and last feature yeah, was seven. Uh, the, every all beholders have ten eye beams. So we give each of these beholder. 10 custom eye beams and t- 10 custom physical features. And this should be beam and feature number eight, if my calculations are correct. Hopefully they are. Um, which do you want to start with, the feature or the beam? Uh, I want to start with the feature. All right, so the feature for this beholder will be a pair of spectral dragon wings, which are purely ornamentary because beholders can already fly. Wouldn't it be cool? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, well, no, they can, they can hover. It's well, different yeah, from flying. It's better than flying. Yeah. Well, <laughs> is it? It is. It is better than flying. But what if you could hover and fly? Maybe. Maybe. Hold on. Let me look. That's that's like upgrade. Oh, that's an upgrade, right? Wings of furled. It's, oh no! It's a flying speed equal to your walking speed, which is. Oh ass. no! So it, it can't ass. fly. They're purely yeah. aesthetic. They're purely aesthetic. That's great. Yeah. I like that better. Okay. And can't they only like pop them off for a little bit? They have to like go to well, sleep. Well, this you know at this 
Beholder just has them. It augment beholders augment reality with Indeed. their brain scape. Indeed. So, so there what, it is. what's the eye ray power? Punchy hand. Punchy hand. <laughs> That's it. That's what it's called. We're turning the uh, the bottom left or very bottom right, whichever uh, like perspective you want to take the Hobbleman, um, and it's just going to gut check people, really. Uh, with so it, with its eye, with its eye that we're going to change to a fist. Okay, so one of its <laughs> eye socks has become a buff arm and fist that it uppercuts people with. It and doesn't even have to be buff. It can be it can be uh, uh, toned. You know, just like kind of kind of like a monk uh, arm. Some uh, some arm of various fitness level. That can punch with at least draconic elemental power, but fit and yes, with draconic elemental okay. power. So it's ooze, the the knuckles are oozing with this draconic power, whatever it may be. Yeah, you could choose one of the five elements. Yeah, one of the five elements. Okay, <laughs> that's it. That's it for we, that's it for this week of the Beholder. Look, looking good. We got we, we got hey, two more, and then it's done. What's a good name uh, for our minion? <sighs> we got, we got to look back at some of these features and come up with something. We'll do that for next. Do episode. minions have names? It's not a minion. It's green and made of crystal. You put a goggle it's got on it. Fucking it's got dragon one eye. wings on it. It looks like inherently like a minion because that is the basic no, design doesn't. of all minions. It super doesn't. I guess some minions have two eyes, but they all wear those freaking goggles. Yeah, this one just happens to have a goggle for its singular eye, but it's it looks it's got ears. Minions do minions have ears? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, know <laughs> I don't think so. But it's got like goblinoid looking ears. It's got hag ears. It's green and its skin's made of crystal. Anyways, show we'll name it Google next stuff. week. We got a new merch shop, guys. Dominion. We, it's uh, Spreadshirt.com. Links in the description. Ears. And we have uh, some brand new designs, uh, one of which I put together myself. And things look good. We have way more products. I think on our old shop, we were really limited in products. Now we've expanded to hundreds of different products. We have some brand new sexy designs. Go ahead and check it out. Links in the description. If you want to help support the show, go check out our new merch shop. Do you want to get highly sexual with your with your D&D swag? There's a cool co- podcast called The Dungeon Cast that you're currently listening to. Isn't this hilarious? It's I, Okay, I Googled something. It says, do minions have ears? And it's a minion with ear po- AirPods. And it's ear... It does, they don't. They don't have The ears. answer is no. Yeah, so this isn't a minion. Go <laughs> check out our new merch, <laughs> shop, merch, the merch store, guys. Um, we're going to be wow. sporting some of the new merch here on the show uh, soon, as soon as it comes in. A lot of these dudes have two eyes, like way more than I thought had two eyes for some reason. Yeah. I don't really watch You got to stop spreading your minion is- misinformation, man. Well, look at that one and tell me that it's not yeah, the same. Yeah, there's one minion with one eye and he wears a goggle. No, bro, there's like a bajillion of these dudes. There's four. Five. In this one s- Yeah, small in an sample image size. of like 20, there's five. Five, five, six, seven. Okay, there's seven. Eight, nine. <laughs> Ten. Okay, roughly. I half keep of finding them. more. There's actually way more. With they're about half and half. We'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. The Dungeon Cast.